Welcome everybody to Spikes and Flats. Hello everyone, this is Tony Prepster from Miles Split, Illinois. This is episode number five. We're here on location at Hanson Stadium, as you can see. We did a little different intro here. And now, as you can see, I'm wearing the, the Bahamas attire, representing my home country, my family's from there. And as you know, we were on the pin relays last week, did quite well. Now, it's all about the show. I want to introduce my trusty co-hosters today. Miss Karina, welcome. Yay. Hi, guys. Yes, as you can see, Miss Karina's got on her little gear today. She's going to be competing. We're here at the girls' um, city uh, qualifying meet. All right, let's go. Let's, let's jump it off. Okay, so the first thing on our agenda today is talking about Pasha. All right, yeah, I, took, I had to think about this. You know, I wanted to know, you know, should I just come raw? Or should I just come, you know, just ignore? But getting a, getting a couple little uh, feedback from people, um, somebody from another team taking shots at me, you know, jokes and flings and all of that. Hey, you know, the best form of flattery is imitation, imitation flattery, or how you say it. So we're gonna leave that alone right now. We're gonna get into what's real. All right. Okay, so we're gonna talk about schools versus jails. All right, this is a remix, Schools versus Jails. Last week, as you know, I talked about school versus jails, but we had a little bit of an issue with the win in our last tape, and we tried to edit out the win. Unfortunately, we, we couldn't, and I apologize for that. So I'm going to rehash that real quick. Um, there's been a lot of talk about high schools cutting sports, cutting teachers, um, even closing down schools. And here's my thing. I, I, work for the, I work for DCFS as well been in the system uh, as an uh, MHP, mental health professional, for 20 years. I can tell you right now, the state's not as broke as you think. They got millions and millions of dollars for jails, and they're building jails as we speak. So, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to build schools, or you're going to spend money on jails, okay? So, my advice to state politicians out there, and teachers and administrators, lobby for schools, because it's, it's much cheaper to educate the mind than it is to send, spend $30,000 a year uh, to house and feed inmates. So spend an extra $15,000 a year, whatever it is. That's my little shot on uh, schools and jails. Okay, so what do you think about athletes competing at the state? All right, as you know, uh, over the last couple of years, the Illinois High School State Association has cut out uh, travel restrictions, basically, what that means is you can travel anywhere in the country or world if you got the money or if you've been invited, like Arcadia Invitational, we got pin relays now, you got beats um, back and up all over. So that being said, I don't object to teams going out of state to compete. Uh, it's, I think it's a great experience for kids to leave the state and see the country, see what's outside of their comfort zone. However, I do have a, an issue with Teams going to big meets, and if you're mediocre, um, I'm not attacking anybody in general. All I'm just saying is, if you're gonna go to a prestigious meet and you run in the time that you know you're only gonna run as fast as your county meet or your area meet, you might want to think twice about that because that doesn't look good. You want to represent the state, and speaking of representing the state, I know you didn't get enough props. Lincoln Way East girls. Much love and much props for you, Coach Angelo Brown, Coach uh, Pierre Infante, and Coach uh, Cunningham uh, for setting the all-time best at Penn Relays, 46-10, all-time best regular season, all-time best period, fourth in the, cup, in the championship of America. That, that's against the Jamaicans, which is the fastest in, in the world. Yes, my home country, the Bahamas, and all of the West Indies. Congratulations, girl. I will be following you. I'm your biggest fan. So I will be following you as we uh, get to the state meet. Oh, so back real quick to uh, traveling out of state. Not, I don't have a problem with it. Just make sure when you travel out of state to these big meets, make sure you, you know what you're getting into. So that's really all I'm going to say about that. Okay, and now we're going to introduce Abe Jones, Illini alumni, here to talk about track and field. All right, come on in, partner, partner is my special guest I was telling you guys about, Mr. A. Jones. Formerly a rolling medal, state champion, won 10 hurdles, runner-up in the 300 hurdles, I think 37, and some 
good change. 36. 36. Oh, I'm sorry. 36 is the change. Um, he's a, a all American, former all American um, at uh, University of Illinois. Uh, Drake Relays. That's right. Uh, all right. And I'm going to now give him the floor. He's going to talk about um, clubs, high schools, and he's got a, a, a new company, uh, trackmyspeed.com. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what's up, everyone? I am Amy Jones. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um, so, the bigger picture of uh, track and field is a lot. I like to reference your comment about uh, educating the mind. So, uh, so on a collegiate level, educating the mind and why it's so important for high school coaches to work with club coaches and how that relationship they have together will benefit and educate the minds of student, um, high school student athletes to take them to that next level. What collegiate coaches are looking for right now is for high school athletes to come into the program ready to go. Uh, most collegiate coaches will have to spend a typical one year uh, maturing the athlete and really getting a response out of them in their sophomore year. Now, a collegiate season is roughly nine to 10 months. A high school season, you're looking at three to four months. Club adds on extra months to that if there's a relationship established with that particular athlete and coach, high school coach versus club coach. When you have a high school coach program working with a club coach program, you're still three months short of a collegiate program, which is why it's important. Now, the difference between a high school program and a club program is really uh, uh, education. Um, not knocking the high school program and not knocking the, uh, the, the club program, but with the education um, that the relationship that the two, the two have, um, will help them make it to the next level. So, uh, with clubs, you will really find more exposure. Uh, club coaches are more um, skill set. I mean, that's what they do from the time they wake up in the morning to the time they go to sleep. They're studying, they're traveling, and you'll find more educational-based um, skills in clubs. Now, high school, not to knock high school, but high school has limited resources than clubs. Uh, club, you have more time to practice versus high school, you're limited to maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Now, what a high school can do with that, that depends on that particular program. So, um, did I cover everything? Yeah, so, what, so the solution, so the issue is, we want to make sure, <laughs> the solution is, um, the issue is, we want to make sure that high school uh, high school coaches and club coaches build the relationship together so they can bridge that program leading into college. Uh, what, what the goal is for high school and club coaches to work together um, is to actually mature the athlete before they get to college. When they get to college, they should be mature athletically really on a sophomore level. And also, it helps them out with money. Yeah, and I think um, in saying that, um, clubs, I know there's been some issues with um, high school coaches um, thinking that club coaches are coming in like how they do with AU, AAU basketball, stealing the kids away from the high school season or turning the kids um, off against the high school coaches. And I think what AU is trying to elaborate is, is it should be collab it's a collaborative thing. It's, 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 since we live in Illinois, our seasons are much shorter than they are in the South where you know, we're, we're interrupted by winter and you know, cold weather and other sports, you know, because this is a basketball state, so we got a lot of kids that play other sports. And with the club track thing, if you get those extra months that you lose during the winter seasons, you gain it back during the summer. And I think if we can, um, what, what I think we're trying to get at is if uh, we can get more collaborative efforts together, we can uh, get our athletes to be a lot uh, faster. And when we get interrupted by horrible weather, kids will still be fast. And I think the goal is just build a, a more whole athlete. Can I kick in the door with it? Sure. Club coaches, stop burning the high school coaches. You know, if you have an athlete that's on your club team and they're, they're in high school, don't tell them not to practice. Uh, you know, you want to encourage them um, to get involved with their high school. 
that way you can gain that relationship with the, the high school coaches and then you guys can work together and fill in the blanks. High school coaches, stop burning the club coaches. Um, you know, use them as a positive resource. Um, bottom line is, when it comes down to track and field for youth athletics, let's be real, high school is a longer season for high school athletes. So those high school coaches will be spending the bulk of the youth season with their athletes. Club coaches, that's just what it is. We have to respect that and uh, start working with them. High school coaches don't lock us out. You know, it's your season is four months, three or four months, and there is a summer to that. You know, you can extend your your sure. your, your high school career by doing that. So yeah. let's work together on so that. So stop it. As I always say, Miss Karina, come in here and help me out here. Stop burning bridges. Club coaches, high school coaches, get along, all right? And I want to thank Mr. A. Jones. TrackMySpeed.com is your site, right? TrackMySpeed.com. Yeah, TrackMySpeed.com. Follow me on Twitter at TrackMySpeed. All right, me too. All right, so thank you, Mr. H. Jones. All right, Steph Hawk here. Thank you, sir. I'll holler at you later. Um, what do we got here? We got an outro. All right, outro. Um, follow me on Twitter as well at ILPTT. Jones. Follow him at ILPTT. Boom. Pop up, see my face on there. Send me comments, likes and dislikes. You can also email me at tjones at milesplit.com. That's my email address. Send me anything you want. You know, be kind. Yeah, be kind. But be honest too. And we're, oh, we are going to talk about next week. We'll talk about, um, got girls sectional meets coming up, boys conference meets coming up. We'll touch on that. And um, I'm going to touch on, oh, I forgot. I'm going to touch on the coaching. I meant to say this. I was supposed to talk about coaching at meets. As you know, a bunch of you, you high school coaches be up in the stand sleeping when you're supposed to be coaching, chewing on your gun, talking on your phone, not coaching, BSing around. So we're going to fix that next week. And we're going to be out of here because we got to get back to a meet here. Thank you for uh, joining us. Bison's Flat, Tony Prefter.